get things underway. Thanks everyone for joining us today on this special day, our Norfolk State Football Press Conference this afternoon. It's an exciting afternoon as we introduce Dawson Odoms as the Spartans' next head football coach. We'll hear from Coach Odoms here in just a few minutes, but we're also pleased to be joined today by NSU President Dr. Javon Adams-Gaston, as well as NSU Athletics Director Melody Webb. They'd both like to make a few remarks before I turn it over to Coach Odoms here in just a little bit, and uh, we'll start with President Adams-Gaston. Thank you so much, and good afternoon. Thank you all for joining us for this press conference. I am pleased and excited to usher in the next phase of Norfolk State University football. I know that Coach Odoms cares and he respects the HBCU mission, and he will bring an exciting energy to Norfolk State University. I wanna thank Ms. Melody Webb, our athletics director, who worked very hard with a spectacular search committee in order to find the right fit for our football team and for our student athletes. Coach Odoms is the right person for this job and we welcome him and his lovely family to Norfolk. Most importantly, I believe that Coach Odoms will lead these young men to success in the classroom, in the community, and on the football field. Our student athletes are eager to play. They didn't get an opportunity to play this past season due to COVID-19 and the pandemic. Norfolk State University is the largest HBCU, historically black college university in the Commonwealth of Virginia. We're also one of the top 20 HBCUs in the nation. It is our opportunity to work with our coach to ensure that all the things that we think are most important for our students to have in terms of their football experience, their experience in the classroom. Coach Odoms comes with all of those qualifications and experiences, and we know that he will lead our football team well. He's experienced a lot of success in the SWAC, and we are confident that he will do well in the MEAC. We look forward to all you will do to be a stellar part of our community as we have looked at um, increasing our footprint in athletics. You will be a pivotal part and partner with all of us in the university in our success. Thank you so much. We appreciate you and we can't wait to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, President Adams Gaston. Uh, now I'll turn it over to our athletics director, Melody Webb. We also have a few remarks for us. Good afternoon and welcome to the celebration. I wanna start by thanking Madam President Adams Gaston for her support of athletics. I would also like to thank the Board of Visitors and the Spartan stakeholders who has a vested interest in our success. And lastly, I would like to thank the search committee and collegiate sports for all the hard work and commitment to ensure we have the best candidate for Norfolk State University. We embarked on a national search to recruit the best candidate for Norfolk State and one candidate rose to the top. I cannot be more excited to welcome Dawson Odoms as our next head football coach. When looking at Coach Odom's background and having the opportunity to speak with him throughout the interview process, it was easy to see how he was a good fit. He spoke about building champions and developing men, building champions on the field and in the classroom. He has a proven success record and his program has competed at the top of the conference year over year. But his selection as our head coach is beyond the field accolades. We were impressed by his commitment to graduation, his emphasis on character building as a key component of his program, his philosophy as a coach is a good fit with our strategic commitment to the holistic student athlete experience, an experience that focused on academic achievement, student athlete wellness, and post graduation success. So I'm excited to have him on board. And without further ado, we'd like Matt to introduce our new football coach to, um, to the world. Once again, it's my pleasure to introduce to you the 18th head football coach in Norfolk State University's football history, Dawson Odoms. Coach comes to Hampton Roads from Southern University where he served on staff since 2011. After joining the Jaguars as defensive line coach that season, he was named the interim head coach two games into the 2012 season, and he was appointed to the permanent post following that year. He led Southern to a 53 and 17 SWAC conference record and a 63 and 35 overall mark. Southern had a winning record in all eight of his full seasons there with one SWAC championship and four SWAC divisional titles. Coach Odoms is a native of Shelby, North Carolina, who has made coaching stops at North Carolina A&T, Bethune-Cookman, 
Clark Atlanta, Georgia Southern, and Gardner Webb Universities. He was a team captain and all CIAA defensive lineman at North Carolina Central. We're pleased to have him on board. And at this time, I'll introduce Coach Odoms for an opening statement, and then we'll open it up for questions from our media after that point. Coach Odoms. Thank you. First of all, you have to understand how great the God I serve is. I mean, it's been, you know, a remarkable journey, but I'm excited and enthusiastic about the next opportunity. I want to say thank you, Dr. Adams Gast, because when you want to be a football coach, you want to coach somewhere where the leader is passionate about the young men and women that they serve. And she's passionate about the growth of Norfolk State University. To Miss Webb, I don't know if you really know what this means. What was what's going on in HBCU and the hiring process. I really believe by me coming to Norfolk State University, it's giving hope to those guys that pay their dues. They do it the right way. You didn't go with the fad. You didn't go with what was going on in society. I'm grateful that you gave a guy a chance from his proven track record. And I say to those coaches that in HBCU, don't give up hope. There's plenty of ADs out there with that same vision as Miss Webb. Keep working hard, keep being the building young man, and you too will get your chance. Board of Visitors, thank you for entrusting in me. Thank you. I know this decision comes from the Norfolk State University family. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to be the next leader of this great football program, the great tradition, the pride and passion that goes with Norfolk State University. To the alumni, to the students, to the athletes, you will get the best version of Dawson Odoms. You will get a man that's eager to accept the challenge, lead, build the young men that are under my tutelage. I'm proud for I'm grateful. I'm thankful to be the head football coach of Norfolk State University. It's not an I in Dawson. It's a we philosophy in the process. You welcome in me and I accept it because you all were willing to work with me. Search committee, thank you for your time. Thank you for your time. I knew when I finished speaking with you that it had a chance. And I'm grateful to be selected as the 18th head football coach of Norfolk State University. I'm ready to roll up my sleeves. I'm ready to go to work. And I'm ready to help build a program. Spartans, it's time to rise up. To Southern University, I can't say enough. Dr. Belton, Board of Trustees, thank you. Thank you. A.D. William Broussard, you gave me a chance. Roman Banks, thank you. Athletic Administration, thank you. Faculty and staff, I can't say thank you enough. To the custodians, the grass cutters, the painters, the carpenters. Mr. Randall, the cafeteria guy, thank you. Traffic and parking, thank you. To my good friends in housing, Ms. Abrams, Ms. Hammond, thank you. To the students, thank you. To the players that I leave behind, I will always love you and I say thank you. To all the assistant coaches that helped me get to this point, former head coaches and all the great players, thank you. 
Why do you think so many? Because Norfolk State, that is what it's gonna take for us to become great, working together. And I leave a place where we did it working together and I'm ready to embrace my new destination and my new opportunity, but the same process, working together. I thank you all. I thank you all for this opportunity. To my wife, best wife a man could have, I'm a coach. And if you're a coach, you understand. To the best mother that my two daughters, Jasmine and Jaden, could ever have. The best role model that little girls could ever have. I say to you, thank you. Thank you. To Jasmine, who's gonna be a freshman here soon, I thank you for understanding. And I just hope you appreciate the promise I made to you that I will never leave Louisiana until you graduate. We prayed about it and look at how good our God is. I love you. To the one who run the house, Jaden, you said you want a swimming pool. I give you the ocean. Take a look at Virginia Beach. I thank you, baby. I didn't get you that swimming pool but you got a lot of water you can play in. And I'm grateful for that. I thank you all for being a part of my life and this decision. Dawson Odoms is ready for the next chapter of being the head football coach at Norfolk State University. Spartans, it's time to rise up. Thank you, Coach Odomus, for those remarks. We certainly appreciate it. Uh, I am going to open up the floor at this point for questions from our media. So if you could use the hand raising feature there in your Zoom, we'll uh, make sure we get everybody in. Um, and we also ask that um, as you come on, as we call you, to uh, please identify yourself and where you're, the media outlet you're with so a coach can get to know you a little better. All right, first name I see with this hand raised uh, will be uh, Adam Winkler. We'll start with uh, Adam here. Let's get you in. Hey there, Coach. Adam Winkler with the uh, CBS affiliate, uh, Channel 3 here in Hampton Roads. Welcome to town. Thank you, Adam. Uh, you heard President Adams Gaston speak to increasing the athletic footprint of this historic Norfolk State University. We've gotten some wonderful feedback on your hire, but we've also gotten more, one question more than anything else. Um, why would a head coach who had success at such a national powerhouse in HBCU football leave Southern for Norfolk State? And I guess my question to you is, what does that say about Norfolk State and what do you see in this opportunity to make that move? Well, that same question came about when I was interviewing. And you have to look at the top when you look at Norfolk State. You have to look at their fantastic president. And I asked that same question, why Norfolk State? But my answer is always, why not? See, when you're a man of faith, you're not afraid of challenges. You're not afraid to step out. Sometimes your blessing is not where you currently stand, but it's in your next destination. I prayed about it. I didn't make an overnight decision. The reason you would be welcome at Norfolk State is because of the people. This is a people business. A AD that's just coming in, trying to solidify her legacy. It's important. It's important to Miss Whale. It's important to Dr. Adams Gaston. It's important to be at a place where they were willing to work with you and they're willing to want you and welcome you into their family. When I digested everything, I was able to come up with a decision. Norfolk State 
happened at the right time. It was time for Dawson Odoms to embrace a new journey. And I'm grateful for that opportunity. All right, next we will hear from uh, Craig Loper. So we'll unmute Craig now. Coach Odoms, unique circumstances for you and I. Welcome to Hampton Roads. Happy to have you here at Norfolk State. You seem to be following me, but that's okay. Uh, Coach, hey, I, I had a chance to cover you for, for the last four years at Southern there in Baton Rouge. Um, just for the people here, explain, talk about your core values in your system, what you want to build your program on, sort of those foundational pieces in your beliefs to building a successful program top to bottom. Well, one of those ingredients that we talk about all the time is the process. The process is everything that we have, everything that we lean on, everything that we stand on. It is very creative, it's adjustable, but it's very understandable. We always talk about in that process, we talk about commitment. We talk about understanding the commitment, understanding what that means. Commitment in all areas, academics, athletics, commitment to our community, commitment to our alumni, commitment to being the type of young man that represents all levels well. We talk about effort, understanding that to be a champion takes work. To be a 4.0 student takes work. If we're willing to provide the effort necessary in all areas, we allow ourselves to get better. We allow, we allow ourselves to continue to climb on that mission. Discipline. I always tell people the difference between winning and losing is discipline. The difference between an A and a C is discipline. The difference between close ball games is discipline. We have to set a standard of how we want to resemble that discipline. Hats off in buildings, pants around your waist, organization, structure. Discipline is what separate great teams. We want to be one of those teams when you look at on the field and off the field. Those young men represent Norfolk State with great discipline, mental and physical toughness. I don't think we understand what that's like. I don't think we understand the mental part of life, not only just football, but life. I'm big on it. Mindset. Mindset. Is the difference between failure and success. We're about building that mindset and shaping them. There's no such thing as my fault, my bad, I thought, I could, I should have, I can't. Those are all in the family of failure and losing. I live in a family of positivity, of building. We can, we shall, we will. And take pride in it. Just because our house don't look like the Joneses, we got to take pride in it. Take pride in what we have. Take pride in who we are as people. Take pride in being a Spartan. That's what it's about. Asking alumni, everybody, the community that's surrounded, the state of Virginia, the world, if you're a Spartan, take pride in being a Spartan. And if we work together, Spartans will arise. All right, our next question, uh, we will unmute Ray Nemo from the Virginian Pilots. Hi, Coach, uh, Ray Nemo with the Virginia Pilot newspaper. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Ray. I wanna ask what your philosophy is on recruiting uh, as far as this area goes. Have you ever had any experience recruiting in this area? And um, the previous coaching staff made it a big point to stay uh, kind of local in Virginia because they thought that would help boost um, Norfolk State's kind of footprint. But uh, what is your philosophy for recruiting local talent and, um, and, and stuff in that regard? Full tank of gas philosophy. I think we should be able to get everywhere with a full tank of gas. It's a state-supported school. We owe it to the, to the tax payers of the state of Virginia that we knock on every door, private or public. We owe it. DC, rural areas. I believe that it's enough talent 
to go around in the state of Virginia. But recruiting is the blueprint. It's the backbone to a successful football program. You have to get out. You got to look on the rocks. You got to dig, but you got to be a relationship. You have to get out in the community, not just assistant coaches, but myself. We have to build relationships. If you build relationships and trust, people will welcome their young man to your program. Winning helps, but building relationships is what it's all about. But every high school door must be knocked on. Whether they got talent or not is not the question. We owe it to the people that pay taxes in the state of Virginia. That full tank of gas philosophy is what it's all about. All right, our next question will come from Scott Cash. Coach, uh, I'm with the ABC affiliate here in town and welcome to town, first of all. Um, President Adams Gaston mentioned one of the reasons that you were hired was that you understand the mission of the HBCUs. In your view, how would you sum up that mission? The simplest way I can sum that up is that I'm a product. I'm a product of an HBCU. I'm a proud graduate of North Carolina Central University. My father left me when I was nine. A lot of the men that have been under my tutelage have been fathers. What you learn at an HBCU as a young man, you learn pride, family, love. Being an HBCU graduate, we're some proud individuals. We all have love for our product. Building of young men. I am who I am because of the coaches, the administration, the people I encountered at North Carolina Central helped make me. Those years in undergrad are some of the most powerful years that you will have as a human being. I want to give back. I want to instill and deposit some of those same things that were passed on to me. I want to love these guys care about them. I want to be the father to the fathers. I want to be the mentor, the coach, the man, the example of who they to become, the encourager, not to degrade them. I want to be the friend. But when it's all said and done, I want to be the one to help them say, well done, Norfolk State University. All right, our next question comes from Sean Robertson. Hey, Coach, congratulations on being hired at Norfolk State University. Thank you, Sean. I'm with the CBS affiliate in Richmond, Virginia. Um, I want to ask you, I want to go back to a question I believe Ray pointed out in regards to recruiting from, you know, close to home in the 757. A lot of these players came from the previous regime. I want to get your thoughts on what your message will be to those young men in order for them to remain at Norfolk State University? The biggest thing is that I'm not a coach that's coming in to get rid of players or run players off. I'm a coach that's coming in to build a relationship. I know they have questions. I know they have concerns. We all do. This new. I want them to feel like they can ask questions. I want them to feel like they got a voice that can be heard. I want to work with them, not against them. But we all must understand that we can only control the things that we can control. I want them to understand who I am as a person. I'm going to care about them and I'm going to love them. I want every player that's currently at Norfolk State University to be at Norfolk State University. Because with them, I really believe we can do it. We can do it. Not I, not them, but together we can. I'm going to embrace them. Talk to them. Build a relationship. You have to do that. It's new to them. It's new to me. But the more comfortable we get with each other, the more trust we build. 
They got a good football team left behind. Coach Scott did an outstanding job. I just want to come in and let them guys know. Dawson Odoms want all of you at Norfolk State University. Give me a chance, just like I got to give you one. We'll work through our adversity, work through our differences. To do one thing, find a way every week to get better and win. All right, our next question comes from James Hill of the Black News Channel. Hey, Coach, congratulations on all of your success. Can you talk a little bit about HBCU football when we look at the big two? There's the MEAC and the SWAC, and each year they get together in the Celebration Bowl. Uh, talk a little bit about getting the Spartans to the Celebration Bowl um, at some point. And then also, uh, guys get an opportunity to graduate, earn an education, and become winners in the game of life. Well, first of all, I think the, the second one is the most important, is that when you come to college and you get that opportunity, first and foremost, it's about getting a degree. Our world can only get better when we deposit these young men with a degree. Your degree gives you a chance at a ticket in life. It gives you an opportunity to start your life off the right way. It puts you in a different era in the world. Those years pay off. We're about graduating. We're about making the communities better. What makes our communities better is having more young men ready to serve it with a degree. The Celebration Bowl, I never talk about it. I talk about what's in front of me. We gotta learn how to go one and oh. You gotta learn how to win the day. You gotta learn how, to, you gotta understand it's a simple process. If you win enough days, you win the week. If you win the week, you win the month. You win the month, you win the year. But it all starts going one and oh. One and oh. Be the best you can be today. We have enough worries about today. You have to challenge your focus to be a great champion. You can't, you can't look beyond what's in front of you. It's enough right here. Don't look down the road. Don't think about what's around the corner. Don't think about what's next. Can we focus and lock in on the journey that's in front of us? That's today. Let's be the best Spartans we can be today. And if we get better every day, you don't have to worry about the celebration bowl. Because eventually, you'll put yourself in position. It starts going one and over. On the field, off the field, with one day. Okay, our next question comes from Logan Hansen. We'll unmute Logan. Hey, Coach. Logan Hansen from BVMSports.com. Hope you're doing well. Congratulations on the new job. My question for you, it's been – you know, nearly two calendar years since this team has even seen the field. How do you get these guys back into the football mindset? And how did they get, how do you get them to buy into your football mindset of this one and no philosophy each and every day? It's a process. It's a slow process. It's a process that we'll get up and running. The way you buy in is you got to have organizational structure. You don't force something on someone. You work together. You talk through it. Everybody has to be on the same page and have good understanding. And I think these players realize that. You put a good staff together. You put people together that can have the same vision you have. Players want to win. Players want to play football. They want to work out. That's the easy part. Doing it together, doing it for the right purpose, that's the hard part. But we have a process in place that allow us the opportunity to shape these men the right way. It's about mindset. I'm big on mindset. Your mindset has to be set on winning. Your mindset has to be set on getting better. It's not just football on the field. We got PowerPoint presentations. We got things that we, we read. We got things that we do to sharpen the mindset to get you to a position to where you understand control the controllers, focus on what's in front of you. That has to be taught. These guys don't know that. 
So we have to teach certain things to them before we ever get to the field. And we're going to do that. We're going to shape the minds to be able to understand what they need to understand in order to be successful. All right, our next question comes from Michael Cobble. Hey Dawson, congratulations. Uh, way to go out. Hell of a game there in your last run. Uh, hope you get some crawfish up there to Virginia at some point in time. But um, uh, wh what would you suggest the next Southern head coach focus on? Obviously, you're uniquely situated to know the direction and the needs of that program. Where do you think that they um, should go on the bluff now that you're leaving it on pretty good footing? Well, for you guys don't know, these are, these are, my, these are local media guys. So they um, – well, Mike, man – it's a good product coming back. And the relationship that are gonna have to be formed with some of these guys and just, just loving them and just caring about them and just treating them the right way. Uh, these guys understand it. No matter who comes in here, they can adapt and, and, and adjust. It's a mindset. And they have to get those guys to believe in them. And I don't know what direction, but it's a good football team left behind some good young men. And they got a good group of parents and someone's going to get a good football team. And I wish them nothing but the best. And I hope they have all the success uh, because they're like sons to me. And I really, really, really love them. And I appreciate their time and dedication. But the next guy is going to get a good football team. All right, we have just a couple questions left, a couple of follow-ups from our local uh, media, starting with Adam Winkler. Coach, it has been, as of right now, 17 months since the Spartans played a game and had the team had some issues with, with the virus during, during spring practice and didn't have a chance to play a spring game, and, and you're coming in now. And I wonder, just, Coach, how much of a re rebuilding job do you see this as how much progress has to be made? You complimented coach Scott and the job that he did. Uh, how do you view this and, uh, and maybe a timeline for turning it around? Well, I don't have a timeline. Okay. But what I do have is an understanding. And I know it takes an evaluation. You have to first find out where you are before you can get somewhere. And that's going to take some time. Uh, do a thorough job in your evaluation. See where you guys are. And you build them. And, and the way you defeat COVID is through discipline. Uh, you got to have discipline to, to play during, during COVID. Uh, we just played a, a spring season. And it took a lot of discipline. Well, you have to get that discipline instilled into your young man. And you got to work. And you got to dedicate yourself to it. Uh, we understand it's a long layout. We understand where we are but we also understand where we want to go. We must focus on the gap that's in between that and build the plan that can help us take the steps necessary to where we want to go. Is it going to happen overnight? I don't know. Is it going to happen this year? I don't know. I don't focus on that. I focus on getting better every day. Defeat the task that you have today. Purpose and task. Know your purpose, focus on the task to achieve. Mission over goals. The mission is to get a football team prepared to play. Let's put a plan in place. And when you do that and you understand process, you have a chance to create an environment for success. All right, our last two will come from um, Ray Nemo first and then we'll uh, finish with Craig Loper after that. Coach, uh, in speaking about forging relationships with the new players, I do want to ask, there is a decent contingent of current players that were very vocal and in some cases intensely vocal about their support for the interim coach, B.T. Sherman. So I was wondering if any of those players voiced their concerns in the team meeting and what is your plan moving forward with the current assistant coaches? Do you plan to bring in your whole new staff or is there any chance coaches like Sherman would be retained? 
Well, we do have a plan in place. Uh, we're going to start some interview process and speaking with the current staff that's at Norfolk State. And I do believe some of those coaches will be retained. I have done the interviews with our staff here, and some of those guys will be coming along with me. Uh, I don't know what that overall makeup is going to look like. We're still working that out. And I understand the concerns of players. But anytime you make change, it creates concern. Uh, my job as a head coach is to confirm that whatever that process is going to be and what it's going to look like, I can assure them that it's going to be the best process for them. I can't stop them from wanting to leave. I can encourage them to stay. And that's been my philosophy. We want them all here at Norfolk State. And we understand the prior staff have great relationships with some of the players that are there. This is a part of the transition. But I think as an administration, as an athletics department, as a current coaching staff that's there, I think if we do it right and we take our time and we put it together the right way, I think we can still keep most of them here and have a great season in front of us. We understand that. Is it gonna go that way? I don't know, but that's the plan. And that plan should be manifesting as we continue to move along in this process. They got some good players up there. And I want them all to know we want them in Norfolk State. And all I can do is let that be known. I can't control the decision-making process for them. All right, our last media question this afternoon, uh, we'll Toss it back to Craig Loper from Wavy TV. Coach, Coach, I've been here three months now. I'm going to try to get you some good places to eat, all right? Yeah, yes, sir. Um, hey, Coach, you were a part of at Southern, just a classic HBCU rivalry game with Grambling year in and year out. Um, at Norfolk State, obviously Hampton is a tremendous rival, but they kind of stopped playing every single year um, a little while back. How do you feel about possibly trying to make a game like that for the Hampton Roads community happen year in and year out, sort of like the Bayou Classic? And is that something you're open to when it comes to conversations with administration? I'm always open to, that's an old tradition. Uh, you know, when we was in the CAI, uh, you had that robbery. And that robbery will always be there. And we understand that certain things have happened uh, to create separation in that, in that robbery. But I think anytime, especially in the state of Virginia, you say Norfolk versus Hampton, that creates some excitement. And one thing I do know, if it is a classic, it, it'll generate some ticket sales and that should generate some revenue. And I know for the fan bases in the communities, that's, that's something everybody probably won't anticipate happening again. Uh, I do think that in time, those discussions will take place. And it's just great. It's great for HBCU football. It's great for the community uh, of, of Norfolk and Hampton. And it's great for the state of Virginia. Uh, there are two great institutions. And I always like playing uh, for that uh, notoriety of beating your rivals. Uh, we've been pretty successful. And I would love to take on Hampton because I just think it's great for the players. I think it's great for the community. I think it's great for the institution. So I'm looking forward to the opportunity of playing whoever's on our schedule. And hopefully that game is back on there. And of course it is for, for this year as we've yes, we got, them on, got them committed for, for a couple of years starting this fall over at Armstrong Stadium and then coming back to NSU uh, uh, next fall as well. Uh, that's our last media question from today. I would be remiss if I didn't uh, also acknowledge the MEAC commissioner, Dr. Dennis Thomas is on. I wanted to say hello as well. So uh, Dr. Thomas. Thank you very much, uh, Matt. Uh, Coach Odom, welcome. I uh, just wanted to extend a hearty and a welcome to you and your family uh, to the Mid-East Athletic Conference, the MEAC. And we look forward to working with you and your staff. Uh, congratulations to Dr. J, Dr. Gaston, and to Melanie Well for an excellent choice. Outstanding. And uh, I just wanted to uh, let you know that uh, the MEAG look forward to, to uh, working with you to develop your program to the highest of, uh, of abilities. So again, welcome to you and your family. Thank you.
All right, that will conclude today's press conference. So we thank all our media partners for joining us here today, as well as, uh, of course, Dr. Adams Gaston and Ms. Webb for their time as well. And uh, thank you, Coach Odoms, for your time. I uh, look forward to uh, having you in town, and I'm sure we'll have lots of opportunities to do this sort of thing here uh, in the near future. Uh, in the meantime, if anyone does want a copy of the Zoom recording, I know a few of you put your email in the chat over there. You can send me an email directly as well, and we can get that to you. Um, that will do it for today. Once again, Coach Odoms, thanks, and welcome to Norfolk State, and we'll uh, be talking to you all again very soon. Thank you. Go Spartans.